Hello, and welcome back to Bite Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. This is part 27 in our series, and it's really part three of a series within a series looking at a Kaggle competition on recommendation engines. And we're going to use node similarity today to try and identify similar customers and articles within the graph that we have. Um, those are really common ways that you can create a recommendation engine. My name is Claire Sullivan. I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j, and here's how to reach me on the internet. A reminder of the important links within our series. First is how to create a free Neo4j sandbox instance, which we will use today. The second is where you can find all the videos in the series, and the third is the repository of the code. Okay, as a reminder, Kaggle's having this competition for $50,000 on a recommendation engine. It's looking at an H&M data set uh, for personalized faction recommendations based on previous purchases. We've talked about the model of this graph in part 26, and we talked about there being a whole bunch of different ways. I'm just gonna use this really simple way, and if you go to part 25, you'll see how I populate this graph um, based on these nodes called customers and other nodes called articles, and the relationship between them is called purchased. Okay, let's look at the graph. I've populated a sandbox instance with a whole bunch of um, nodes and relationships here. Now, we're going to be using the GDS function called node similarity. In order to use any GDS function, we need to create an in-memory graph projection. I don't have time to go through how to do this today, but I encourage you, if this is new to you, go check out part 12 of the series, and that shows you how to create these in-memory graph projections. So I'm gonna create this one called purchases um, between articles and customers. And uh, okay, now I've got that. Now let's look at node similarity. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have this um, node similarity streaming to the screen. And um, node similarity is order n squared. So we kind of want to try and keep the number of nodes that we're using down here. We're doing that by this term degree cutoff. We're saying that any node that has a degree less than five, we're not going to consider a node similarity. Okay, and then we're, we're returning nodes that are related to other nodes. Um, and in particular, I recommend you go check out how we convert out of this memory space that doesn't have any meaning to us. Um, we're gonna go yank out our customer ID for node one and the age, um, and same with node two, and we'll return turn it by descending similarity scores. Um, and here's what I get. Okay, I get customers, I get ages, um, and that's all well and good. Let's look at the two customers, though, who have the highest similarity score between them. Okay, and if I scroll up here, I can see that there's a similarity score of 0.83. So I'm gonna just grab those customers based on their customer ID. Let me throw that in here. Okay, and here's the graph that I get. Now this is interesting. I, I didn't tell the graph that I wanted to include the node property of age, but I can see that my two customers are both 25 years old. And if I look at the things that they purchased, five out of the six purchases were uh, in common. And if you take the ratio, that's 0.83. So our result makes sense on node similarity. Now, what about article similarity? Here's a hint. Node similarity goes in the direction of the relationship. And if you recall from the graph model, we went from customer to article. But let's say I want to come up with what's the articles that are most in common. What I'm going to do, this is just a little trick, I'm going to say that I'm going the reversed orientation of my relationship. Okay, and so so that means that my cus or my articles are coming first, and that will allow us to get our article similarity. So um, I've created this new graph called purchases rev for reverse, and now I'm going to run um, my node similarity on that graph. Again, I'm using a degree cutoff of five, and just to limit my results even further, I'm saying no similarities less than 0.5. We're returning the same stuff; it just happens to be the articles. Now, what we see here, these um, I have a similarity of one on um, this particular uh, bathing suit and this particular bathing suit. Now what these are, if you actually look at them, um, this is a two-piece bathing suit. One of them is the top and one of them is the bottom. So it would make sense that if somebody is purchasing the top of the bathing suit, they're also probably going to purchase the bottom. Now let's look at... Um, that one that I have highlighted there, the top of the bathing suit. And I'm going to say, I want to know um, of the customers who purchased that, um, that top, what else did they purchase? Okay, so let's give this a run. Now, what I see here um, is that the people who purchased that top 
also purchased some of these other bathing suits and they all happen to be black. Um, so the, you know, people purchasing black bathing suits might purchase, um, you know, complementing colors, complementing bathing suit colors. And so that kind of makes sense. Okay, so that's that's kind of where we're going to wrap up today. Consider using node similarity when you're making your recommendation engine. I just want to say thank you for tuning in. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please reach out to me on Twitter and have a good day.